We started dating my freshman year. I was 14. He was 15. He messaged me that he had brought a gun to school and he was going to shoot himself unless I met him after class. He took me to the woods and that's when he raped me. I talked to the school resource officer. He didn't take a police report. I talked to the principal. I was threatened with suspension. If it had just been me, I think I could move on. But seeing that it wasn't just me, it's still happening, I have to do something about it. Like, I just have to. Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools teaches more than 140,000 students across 180 schools in North Carolina. For the past year, current and former students have accused the district of suppressing reports that students were sexually assaulting one another on campus. These accusers say that administrators even retaliated against students who tried to speak up. Now, they're trying to hold the district accountable. They've collected over a dozen anonymous accounts from CMS students who say that they, too, were sexually assaulted or harassed at school. Okay, I got the timeline. The timeline. timeline. Who has nice handwriting? When I looked at the timeline for the first time, I knew there was a lot, mm -hmm. but I just didn't expect it to be so extensive and so long. We didn't even put all of the anonymous yeah. people on there. So... October 22nd, 2014. And then you'll write Nikki Wamwell above in the blue. Ooh, that's a hard date to hear. Nikki Wamwell was a sophomore at Myers Park High School in 2014 when she says she was raped in the woods surrounding the school by a classmate. We started dating my freshman year. I was 14. He was 15. He messaged me that he had brought a gun to school and he was going to shoot himself unless I met him after class. He took me to the woods and that's when he raped me. At first, I was just quiet and stopped dressing up to go to school and stopped caring about things. And then eventually I overcompensated. I did everything I possibly could to not have a single second to think about it. Every single one of these that we know of happened early fall semester. It's called the red zone in college because it's the most common to happen right when school's starting. Oh. Give a hug. Students and former students from at least four CMS schools have said that they were sexually harassed or assaulted. At Myers Park High School, at least four people have said that they were sexually assaulted in or around the school, only to be met with indifference or even aggression from officials when they tried to report it. I'm going to uh, go to the bathroom really fast. Are they open? Do you know? Yeah, they're open. Okay. Serena Evans says that, as a 15-year-old in 2016, she was raped before a tennis match by a classmate. My perpetrator cornered me, forced me into the bathroom that he said no one used, walked me in the stall, assaulted me, and then raped me, and then left me in there. October 25th was literally the day that changed my entire life. I don't think I'll ever forget that date, like ever. Um, 
It went from being like a fairly you know, happy, healthy, athletic freshman to being like, absolutely not. I will not step foot in the car. Like, you will not be driving me to school. Um, like, I will not be going to school. I think part of me thought, like, who's to say this won't happen again? In 2018, a woman known only as Jane Doe in court papers sued CMS, accusing administrators of covering up her 2015 sexual assault. In 2019, Nikki Wumwell sued too, but under a pseudonym. In June 2021, Wumwell publicly accused CMS of covering up her rape. Serena Evans came forward shortly afterward. The CMS superintendent assembled a task force that was supposed to reform how schools handled sexual assault. But the accusations of sexual misconduct didn't stop. In fact, they spread. In December, the task force finally issued recommendations, urging the district to further educate students about consequences for sexual misconduct and to better protect them from retaliation. It's not clear what, if anything, the district has done with those recommendations, and it's repeatedly reassigned officials accused of covering up misconduct to other jobs in the district. Myself and Serena were both threatened with suspension if we continued with an investigation and our perpetrators were found not guilty. CMS and the rest of the country can and must do better. It has been eight months since I first publicly came forward with my story. Since then, there have been multiple other Myers Park victims who have come forward. We have not seen or heard CMS take accountability for their actions. What we have heard are excuses and false promises. CMS, perhaps your strategy is continuing to wait for us to go away. So, how's that working so far? One of my favorite trophies is this one in the corner because like the top of it, um, like the tennis ball is kind of squishy and you can like turn it, so it's like really kind of cool. <laughs> this was for Southerns. You won Southerns. Yeah. That's what this is. Oh, I didn't realize that that was like you dominated the entire, like three states? No, nine, no it's nine like states. seven, oh, nine, nine states. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember how it felt to win Southerns? Yeah, I cried a lot. <laughs> um, For the last probably 11 years, tennis has basically been my whole life. It was not only something that I enjoyed, but it was something that helped me also, physically and mentally. Do you feel like what happened at Myers Park took tennis from you? I think my perpetrator took tennis away from me. Um, and I think the administration at Myers Park helped my perpetrator take tennis away from me. Three days after the alleged attack, Evans says she told her mom, Kay Mays, about it. They filed a police report, and Mays emailed Myers Park principal Mark Bosco, asking to talk immediately. She says he didn't respond. Days later, Evans and Mays met with Tyson Jeffess, a Myers Park assistant principal. The first meeting we had with him, he kind of started it out with like, I just want you to know that because you were in the boys' bathroom, if you decide to go through with an investigation, you'll be the one that is suspended and the one that is gets in trouble. I looked at my mom and I was like, look back at him and I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? And he said, well, you were in the boys' bathroom. like." you broke school rules, like, you know that's not allowed. And I was like, <laughs> you're, you're kidding me. I was like, even though it wasn't by choice? And he just looked at me and he was like, yeah, that's against school rules. Not only did he threaten me with suspension and that suspension would permanently be on my school record and damage my chances of getting into college, but he also kept making sure that we understood that like, 
we couldn't talk about this with anyone but him. That's a parallel to basically what my rapist told me. And to have your rapist and your school tell you virtually the same thing is like, it's honestly like mind blowing. Four months later, Evan says that Tyson Jeffess asked her to write down her account of the alleged sexual assault. So after school that day, I went to the locker room in the basement of the gym because I was going to get dressed for our regional tennis match. I was surprised to see him standing there, and when he said hello, I said hi back just to be polite. He was being very pushy and intense. The more he talked and the closer he got, the more scared I felt. I froze up. I didn't know what he was capable of. I was terrified that he would hit me or grab me or choke me. He said something about having to do it before he turned 18 over the weekend. He told me to go with him to a boy's bathroom that no one uses. When we got to the bathroom, he led me into one of the stalls and locked the door. I didn't want to think about this stuff again, but I'm willing to if it will make him get the punishment he deserves. Evan says she never learned why she needed to write this account, or what came of it. Vice News obtained documents from both Tyson Jeffess and the student who Evan says raped her. In one of these documents, Jeffess confirms that he talked to Mays and that Evan's alleged sexual assault. In another, the student says he and Evans went to a bathroom where they were feeling on each other, but he denies that it went further. He says he didn't force her or grab her in any way. He was never charged with sexually assaulting Evans. In the months after Evans' allegation, Mays continued to reach out to Myers Park staff. How many emails do you think you sent to Myers Park officials? I think somewhere between 50 and 60, maybe. And of those 50 and 60 emails, how many of them got a real response? Regarding the whole, the rape? Yeah. None, none. Mays says she lost hope in Myers Park. Seven months after she first reached out, she sent one final email to Principal Bosco. Perhaps the best way for you to acquire some sense of empathy and some understanding from a victim's and parent's view is for you to begin to think about it as if the exact same thing is going to happen to your daughter. Last thing she is expecting in the whole wide world. <sighs> is to get raped at school. This is you pouring your heart out. What did he say in response? Uh, I never got a response. We reached out to Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, Mark Bosco, Tyson Jeffess, and the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department about Evans and May's allegations. No one responded. A district spokesperson previously told Vice News that CMS can't talk about student discipline or cases involving ongoing investigation, pending or settled litigation, or otherwise confidential student or staff data. Evans says she ultimately moved across Charlotte to go to another school. And there was no sympathy. There was no, like, I'm sorry this happened, or, you know, like, we'll look into it, or, like, we'll talk to him. He had no consequences. He was allowed to continue playing football and continue extracurriculars and continue to being a normal kid. Why is his life more important than mine? <laughs> Myers Park High School is enormous. It sits on 62 acres and has 13 buildings. For years, a Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer served the entire school, Bradley Leak. At least three former students say that they reported to Officer Leak that they had been sexually assaulted in the woods surrounding Myers Park. Nikki Wumwell is one of them. I talked to the school resource officer, and he told me that it wasn't rape because 
I had a prior relationship with a student and it wasn't the first time that he and I had done sexual activity together, so he said it didn't count as rape. And then I went and talked to the principal and um, he said that we could move forward with an investigation, but just to let me know that if they move forward an investigation and they decide that he was innocent and I was lying, that I could be suspended for having had sex on campus. The concept that it wasn't rape because it wasn't the first time it had happened made me feel really stupid that I kept falling for it. Because that was kind of the implication is like, oh, if this has really been assault this whole time, if he really has been threatening you this whole time, how could you keep letting this happen? And I still feel like that a lot because of how he said it. It just really messes up how you think about it when you're told that it is your fault. Wombwell is one of at least two women who have sued CMS and Officer Leak over their handling of sexual assault allegations. In court documents, Officer Leak said Wombwell reported having sex in the woods after her ex-boyfriend threatened to harm himself if she didn't. Leak also said that he told Principal Bosco that there was not sufficient evidence of a crime. A judge dismissed Wombwell's lawsuit against Officer Leak because, in part, Wombwell didn't prove that Leak obstructed justice or that he was deliberately indifferent to her. In court documents, Bosco said that he offered Wombwell a chance to make a formal complaint or to take further action, and she turned it down. He denied that he'd done anything to discourage her. Wombwell settled her lawsuit with CMS and Mark Bosco in 2021. They paid her $50,000, but no one admitted guilt. Wombwell says the student who sexually assaulted her has never been charged. I didn't have too much faith in CMS when I first started the lawsuit, just because of the way that my case had been handled. But I was hoping that maybe if the higher-ups at CMS saw what was happening, that that would help hold the people directly responsible for my case, like the school resource officer and the principal, accountable. But it didn't end up that way. Another former Myers Park student says she too was raped in the woods around campus in 2014 and reported it to Leek and a Myers Park administrator. She asked to remain anonymous. I confided in my friend what had happened and they told me like, that's not okay, like that's an assault. We went to the school resource officer and reported it. Officer Leek said he believed me, but that basically there was nothing he could really do for me. He um, stressed that because I had waited too long and there was no physical evidence, that there was nothing they could really do and that it wasn't really worth the police looking into it and that it could just come back that they didn't believe me or that I'd get in trouble somehow too and kind of echoed what I was later told by the assistant principal is that the most they could do is give me a protective order where he was told to stay away from me on campus. But even um, Officer Leak and the assistant principal kind of stressed that they couldn't be everywhere on campus at once because it was so big. So there's no way the protective order would be like foolproof. So nothing really ever happened after I reported it. This former student told the same story in a legal declaration that she swore to under oath. Officer Bradley Leak was deposed in connection to the allegations of sexual assault at Myers Park. And he said in this deposition that the only reports of sexual assault that came out of the woods were the ones made by mm. Nikki Wimwell and Jane Doe, who is a woman who is still in litigation mm. with Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. Are you saying that Bradley Leak is lying? Yes, because I definitely reported to him and had a witness there. And we met in his office and there's no way to get around that, that there were other people that came forward, at least me. Bradley Leak retired in 2018. We sent his lawyer a detailed list of questions for this story. That lawyer responded, saying, cases should be tried in courtrooms, not newsrooms. In August 2021, Weeks after Wumwell and Evans came forward, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools suspended Principal Mark Bosco. But after an investigation, Bosco was reassigned to a new job in the district with a salary of more than $150,000. We sent a list of questions to CMS and Bosco for this story. 
they didn't get back to us. But a CMS spokesperson previously told us that the district cannot provide information about specific personnel matters, such as employee suspensions. When a student reports sexual harassment or assault, there's a federal civil rights law that dictates what should happen next, Title IX. Title IX protects against sex discrimination in education. It requires that schools support students who allege sexual misconduct, such as by separating accused perpetrators from their victims. It also blocks schools from retaliating against students who report misconduct. CMS accusers say the district violated Title IX. Unfortunately, it isn't uncommon for schools to violate students' Title IX rights and to sweep sexual harassment under the rug. That is far too common of an occurrence. Shawali Patel worked for the Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights and has spent years tracking Title IX violations. Politicians have zeroed in on how Title IX plays out on college campuses. But there's been relatively little focus on Title IX in K-12 schools. In the most recent data, the Department of Education recorded nearly 15,000 incidents of sexual violence at K-12 schools in just one school year. It's been like that for decades, um, and yet it's so underreported. So schools should really be doing what they can to create the culture and environment where students feel safe and like they would be supported if they came forward, not punished. Do you think that Charlotte Mecklenburg schools should be investigated for violating Title IX? Yes. When schools punish survivors who come forward, they're, they're sending a strong message to the students, to the community, that not only will they tolerate sexual harassment, but that it's not safe to come forward as a survivor who's actively seeking support and help from the school. When a school doesn't follow Title IX, the Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights is supposed to make them. The Office of Civil Rights investigated CMS at least three times between 2015 and 2017. As of February, the district remained under federal monitoring. The Department of Education didn't respond to requests for comment on this story. In court documents, the CMS Board of Education said that it has effective policies to prevent sexual harassment and discrimination and to ensure prompt investigation of complaints. What makes Charlotte Mecklenburg schools unusual? See, the unfortunate reality is that I don't think their schools are that unusual. A lot of students who come forward are punished by their schools because they're disbelieved, because their school then and deciding not to believe the survivor will punish them under a school sex code, um, might punish them for a false report. These are all ways that survivors have been punished after they've experienced sexual violence because their schools have not supported them. What is the impact of a school failing to uphold the student's Title IX rights? It can have devastating consequences, and we've seen that over and over again. Not only are survivors facing emotional distress and trauma, but sometimes they're actually re-traumatized by the schools. Hi. Hi, Fran. How are you? I am not doing good. Okay. Um, I had my first panic attack in like a long time after the protest. You knew that this would be hard. Yeah, I just don't think I, realized how hard maybe. Yep. Like my PTSD like symptoms and stuff are like really bad right now. Okay. And I'm like more depressed. Okay. There's times that I just don't wanna like be going through like the pain that I'm going through right now. Evan says she spends about six hours each week in various therapies. Let's see, my migraines are slightly worse. Um, I kind of had like a couple steps backwards, honestly, with like emotional stuff. Uh -huh. Yesterday morning was like really rough for me. Okay. Um, <sighs> Is the way that Myers Park responded to your report a trauma that's coming up for you a lot this week? Yes, the way 
CMS responded is definitely a continuing kind of thing I'm dealing with. Something happens to you, you know, on a school campus and you go to, you know, those that are supposed to protect you, you know, your administrators, and they tell you that it's still your fault. And their reaction really messed with my head. CMS, you know, violated me. I mean, they did violate me, um, not physically, but it was a violation. Sometimes the way that CMS treated me and the way that CMS reacted is sometimes feels worse than the rape itself. I come across as a very put together person, a very um, strong person. And a lot of people think that means that I'm not struggling, but it's still there. And I still take medication. I still wake up from nightmares and like have to be held by my fiance. How much of that trauma do you think stems from the way that you were treated by Myers Park when you tried to report? I would say that the way that the aftermath happened affected my healing just as much, if not more, than the actual incidents. We're heading to a school board meeting where Nikki, Serena, and others will be sharing their stories. They believe this is their best chance to get Charlotte Mecklenburg schools to listen to them. The CMS Board of Education oversees district policy, curriculum, and budget. Wumwell and Evans hoped that, by sharing their accounts and those of anonymous CMS students, the board would pay attention to Title IX. We have begun the hiring process for approximately 53 campus security associates. We have not found any firearms, but some of the things that we are finding are vapes, tasers. Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools Superintendent Ernest Winston wasn't in charge of the district when Evans and Womwell say they reported being sexually assaulted. But he has led the district's response, or lack thereof, to the controversy. Winston has a boss, the school board, led by Chairperson Elise Dashu. Now we're, now we're down the end. They moved you guys later, so people won't listen. I'm so nervous. It's normal. Dude, having to look at Elise and Ernest right now, I'm like having a hard time having positive thoughts. So we're going to move on to requests from the public. And as you know, I will read the rules, which are as follows. Each speaker may speak on any topic of their choice except for individual student matters or specific personnel matters. Personal attacks will not be allowed. Profanity or other inappropriate language will not be allowed. And the board reserves the right to cut off any speaker who violates these rules. So we've got Serena Evans. All right, so um, my name is Serena Evans and I was raped on the campus of Myers Park High School in 2016. There is a recurring theme in our CMS community, a lack of accountability and blatant disregard for the care and safety of victims of harassment, sexual assault, and rape on our CMS campuses. It really amazes me that some of the administrators who are shoving our rapes and assaults under the rug have children of their own, and more specifically, daughters. If it was your own child, how would you want her rape handled? CMS, how many more innocent victims is it going to take? How many more lives have to be shattered? How much louder do we have to be? Thank you, Ms. Evans. My name is Nikki Wimwell. When I was 15 years old and a sophomore at Myers Park High School, I was raped by an ex-boyfriend in the woods by campus after he told me he had brought a gun to school. When I reported to school the next day, I was largely met with indifference. 
I was then told by the principal that if I pursued an investigation and the student was found not guilty, I could be suspended for having had sex on campus. This principal has since been reassigned to an administrative role within the district that previously did not exist and pays nearly $150,000. When you delay accountability or meaningful change, it sends a clear message. You don't care. Please, show us you care. Good evening. Tonight I'll be sharing a story from a CMS graduate from the class of 2019. I was raped my freshman year of high school. I reported it to the school because he went there too. They did nothing for me. I am also reading a story from a current CMS student. Over the course of these five years, I've continuously been a victim of sexual harassment and violence. Even now, after I've reported everything, nothing has happened. I am not silent. I have been silenced. I'm sure. I'm going to allow statements to be read by someone who's not signed up to speak. Okay. That's true. All right, Jonathan Fox. Uh, this is another story from the CMS. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. People sign up to speak for themselves. So anybody else who has their own I testimonial or feedback to share? To stand in front of the people that threaten them with suspicion. Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Um, is anybody else here to speak for themselves? May I continue? No, no. We, we do have lot rules that we kind of have to follow here. But we're... Okay, all right, we'll break all the rules tonight. And please, please know that my email address and my phone number are open if anyone needs to reach out to me directly. Thank you. This is a, a reading from a graduate of 2019. When I was in the sixth grade, three uh, male students in my grade sexually harassed me every day on the ride home from school on the bus. The extent to which people will go to silent survivors over protecting or doing anything to help survivors is absolutely crazy. Their job is to protect their students, to know they care so little. They care so much about their reputation and so little about their students. I mean, I just don't understand how anyone wouldn't be able to understand why it might be hard for someone who was assaulted, sexually assaulted of any kind, or raped, to like be able to tell their story. Like, I just don't understand why anyone would not understand that, you know? like. It took me five years to get to the point to be able to speak up. Like, if it wasn't for my mom, I might have just dropped out of school. You know, like if she hadn't been there advocating for me, then I would have had to continue going to Myers Park. And I honestly think that I either would have dropped out or, you know, I might have just not wanted to be here anymore be here anymore, like, die? Yeah. I, I don't think I can talk. I'm really sorry. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. <laughs> we requested interviews with both the school district and the school board. Board Chairperson Elise Dashu agreed to speak. But the district said that the district and the board were, quote, one team, and Dashu would speak for them. I understand you haven't done another on-camera interview with anybody about these allegations. So I wanted to ask, why talk to us? Why do this interview? Whew. Um, I think it's, for me personally, it's really important to be able to talk about these issues. And it's really frustrating with the role that I have being on the school board. There's just too many questions that I can't answer. I mean, I'm a woman and I've got my own experiences, you know, so it's very real what I'm hearing from girls. Tell me about Charlotte Mecklenburg School's Title IX practices and protocols. 
those sorts of things, you're best to get that information from the district. I did reach out to the district to ask them for an interview, and they told me that the district and the school board are one team, and so that you were the best person to put these questions to. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I can, you know, I've, I've told you like what I can speak to, um, but there's a clear delineation between what the district and staff do and what school board does. So tonight people came to you and they asked you to find accountability for something that you're saying the district should be held accountable for. I guess I'm wondering, what is the point then of coming to the school board and asking for help? It is always good to bring concerns and issues and even ideas about how to do things better to us. But anything action-related in the schoolhouse, that's going to be driven by staff. I guess I'm confused then how people can expect the school board to hold the school district accountable. If when there are serious, you know, when you've got serious issues in a district, you do hold your staff accountable. So I, I did want to talk about some of the personnel changes in the district. You know, Mark Bosco, who was the former Myers Park principal, he was reassigned to a new job in the district. He still has a six-figure salary. Tyson Jeffess, a Myers Park assistant principal, is still the school's assistant principal. The former principal and assistant principal at Hawthorne Academy are still working for the district. If those people did nothing wrong, why were they reassigned? That's one of those things where it's not the board, it's not what the school board does. It's just not our job. There are some very strong allegations that are being made about Charlotte Mecklenburg school officials covering up sexual assault reports. What actions have been taken to address those allegations? See, that's, that's making it look like I'm the, the person who would take those actions, um, which would really muddy the waters. So, so if it's not the school board, mm -hmm. who are they supposed to be going to? You know, we're listening. I can't speak for the superintendent, you know, but he's taken a lot of actions. I was talking to the women who were sharing their stories mm -hmm. and they felt that the attempt to not have some people speak was silencing them. Mm. Why did you do that? That was my decision, not Mrs. Ms. Dash's. Yeah, so basically Charlie reminded me, we have this rule. And then when the students pointed out, like they really needed to read these. And so I, threw the rule away tonight. I talked to them afterward and they did not feel supported. They were in tears. I mean, mm -hmm. frankly, they were devastated. Mm. I hate that. I do. I guess they're not asking for feelings or even sympathy. I think they're asking for change. I, it's a school board meeting. I don't know if they expected to come and, I mean, there's, um, like I said, the superintendent has this task force report. I can't speak for that. I just can't. I'm proud of the kids for speaking up. And I get that there's some kids who are, you know, really unhappy. Well, and on that note, <laughs> thank you for sitting down with us. With what is that going to the superintendent staff tell you? I can read you the email. Yeah, Give me one second. That's really confusing. It's my understanding that you'll attend the Board of Education meeting Tuesday evening and interview Chair Dashu afterwards. As we are one team, that will serve as the district's opportunity to respond to questions of importance to your audience. Thank you. It's the superintendent's task force, it's not the board's task force. What I'm getting out of this conversation with Chair Dashu is that the board is not the group to go to if you're looking for change, the district is. And then the district won't speak to me. I can't answer why the superintendent won't speak to you. At the end of the day, 
the board will act once the superintendent makes recommendations. Now, what they will do with that information, I can't promise what that action will be, nor can she. She's one of none. It's frustrating because you watch someone like Serena Evans and that guttural reaction is tough. I'm a father of two daughters. I get it. It's hard to watch. It's painful. I know how much this board wants everyone to be safe in our schools. Do you think people are safe in your schools? I sent my daughter to these schools. Do I think we're perfect? No. This is a nationwide societal issue. It's not unique to CMS. Six weeks after our interview, the CMS Board of Education fired Superintendent Ernest Winston. An investigation uncovered, in part, concerns about his handling of Title IX. Luca! Evans is now suing CMS. She <laughs> says she won't settle and is determined to go to trial. Okay, bring it back. In the wake of everything that happened at the school board meeting, do you plan to keep going back to those meetings? Um, I don't think that me going back um, to any board meetings is going to change the minds of the board members. Um, I don't think it's going to make CMS just out of nowhere decide to help us out. I mean, if they were going to help us, they would have. Now we need to go higher up than CMS, than the Board of Education. We want the Department of Education to investigate CMS as a whole. I think people don't like to admit that sexual assaults happen in middle and high schools or even elementary schools, especially because not only is that admitting that this happens to children, but also admitting that young people, mostly young boys or men, are capable of this sort of thing. Rape culture is so prevalent in our society that a 15-year-old boy is capable of raping his ex-girlfriend. There's a lot of ugly truths you have to look in the mirror if you admit that. I'm Michael Learmont, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.